you say carrying force, like force carrying particles, like I'm just trying yeah. to like apply intuition. Yeah, okay. I guess I'm not really deeply yeah. thinking into it. Like, what does that really mean? Well, so <laughs> it's not really carrying a force. Yeah. Okay. What it is is its behavior actually is responsible for what we call the force. Oh, you know, we see, actually talk okay. about force as being uh, Newton's laws, you know, F equals MA. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, force is a theoretical concept. We don't see force, right? We don't see a thing called F. What we actually see are the acceleration of particles, right? Oh, we, well, that's all we see. We, that's all we see. We only see acceleration. So we infer from that that there's a force. That was Newton's idea. The, uh, or an idea of several others, but Newton was the one who put it into a nice framework of three laws. The, uh, but the idea is that you can actually explain the acceleration of particles by introducing this idea of force. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so, but it's, but it's purely a theoretical idea. You, again, you don't see a force, you don't see a force field. See, you just see the acceleration of particles. Okay. So when we actually then get to now quantum electrodynamics, what you're actually seeing are the, uh, the interaction of charged particles, and they accelerate. They either attract each other if they're opposite in charge, or they repel each other. And what we're actually t really saying when we talk about photons as carrying the force, it's actually the exchange of photons between these two charged particles that actually results in a net force. The, uh, you know, we actually already talked about the fact that if you took that annihilation diagram of electron, positron, and a photon, you turned it 90 degrees, you now had an electron emitting a photon and actually its momentum being, a, being the change because of momentum conservation. Well, that particular picture, you have to now think of it happening an infinite, now almost an infinite number of times. It's not just one photon, but it's a bunch of photons. Mm -hmm. And they're interacting. And when you actually calculate the net effect of all that, you find that, in fact, you get a, for charged particles that are opposite in charge, you get an interaction which is repulsive. And for particles that are opposite in electric charge, you have an interaction that's, that's in fact, attractive. And that's actually how we think about, that's why the idea that we, we talk about photons as, quote, carrying the electromagnetic force. But it's really the interaction of photons with the charge carrying force of charge, charged particles that actually result in their acceleration the, uh, and what we now call the, the for electromagnetic force. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was a whole but, new definition of force. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that when we talk about the strong force, we're actually also talking about the fact that protons and neutrons are accelerated toward each other. The, uh, and the uh, and that's what we actually then infer as the strong force. And so when you actually think about the strong force carriers, which we call gluons, they have to have special properties that they can actually keep protons and neutrons bound together. If you had two protons close to each other, even though they're positively charged and the electromagnetic force will want to push them away, the strong force is stronger and pulls them together, causes them to accelerate toward each other. But one of the properties of the strong force is that if you get far enough away, it, it vanishes much more rapidly than the electromagnetic force. So it's what we actually recognize as not being a long-range force. It's, in fact, mm -hmm. a short-range force and only acts in the sort of the, uh, the distance scale of what we see of an, of an atom, the atomic nucleus, sorry, about, and you know, Sorry, yeah, are the right. are the gluons in this case the force carrying particles for the strong nuclear force? Yes. Okay. Right. And there are eight of them. Oh wow! There are now eight of them. The um and those eight are needed to be able to explain all of these funny features of the of the strong force, where the electromagnetic force we only needed one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one photon, mm -hmm. but we have eight different kinds of gluons. The, uh, that actually are needed to describe the strong force.